scored 99.4. Might be the only black saddle coupe known to exist. Side exhaust. Yeah, it's a real thing. Yeah. No, it's a half this, million dollar car. This car is a black saddle L89. Pipe. Car. Pipe. Yeah. 69 L89 car that scored 99.4 at the Nationals and might be the only black saddle L89 known to exist. It's the best of the best. Hi, so we're back here at Eric's warehouse, and this is in the same building as County Corvette. Uh, some space opened up here a while back, and it made sense for him to relocate some of the, well, more of his collection. This is kind of like the heavy hitter room, uh, these two rooms here, and it's just nice that if, if the cars need something, they're right here. We can send a mechanic over, or roll them over, push them over, drive them over, and do whatever maintenance is necessary and uh, we'll just go through some of these cars here. Now, two of the Corvettes, two 435s, great cars, are out for judging right now. But I have behind me, this is a 67 435 that I chased back in 2006 and missed it by $5,000, and it resurfaced up in uh, Long Island, New York. Yep. We heard about it. We got the car down here, and I ended up doing a full restoration on it again. And this is a Canadian black saddle leather car, and uh, it's fully judged now, I guess. What did it, it did? 99.3 uh, at the Nationals. Yeah, for the NCRS guys out there, that's, uh, it's, uh, it's really hard to score at that level. And it's, it's lacquer paint, it's original tires, not, not reproductions, and just very few uh, NOS parts. Uh, that's what it takes, you know, original glass and that type of thing. That's what it takes to get to that level. And then Eric just bought this. Uh, this was a car at another collection. We were down in... Um, Bloomington and Charlotte, North Carolina, judging the... Uh, we had that's the, right, that's right. We had the uh, LS6 judged. That's right. And this car was sitting... Right, it was it. getting judged at, the, at that time. And then, uh, well, no, then we were at Don's collection, and he, we had bought that silver 435. Correct, we saw it there. Uh, had a silver 435 that one of my clients bought. Yeah, I'd like uh, this car for... Four years. <laughs> and then, yeah. And yeah sometimes a chase, it takes, it takes years of chasing. We're going to show you one special car that he's been after for five years and finally got it. It's, it's really a special piece. But what's cool is um, Eric's become a very proficient collector of his, on his own now. He's bought some really nice Hemi cars and has the ability now to, to, to buy some, you know, to understand what to look for and what to avoid. You know, he's, he's, he's got some great cars and a few of them on his own and, and just has built a tremendous collection here. You, you cannot go wrong buying the best of the best. And, you know, I offer that advice to a lot of people. Few take it, Eric's one of them. And this is what you end up with is just a stellar collection of cars. Well, so. I think you, you undercut these two cars a little bit. I undercut them a little bit? Okay, a little well, bit because, you know, you got a lot of cars to cover here. I've got to move quickly. You know, that's a 67 black 435 paperwork, original engine. Canadian. Can, Canadian docks that scored 99.4. Might be the only black saddle coupe known to exist. Side exhaust. Yeah, it's a real everything. Yeah. No, it's a half million dollar car. This car is a black saddle L89. Pipe. Car. Pipe, yeah. 69 L89 car that scored 99.4 at the Nationals and might be the only black saddle L89 known to exist. It's the best of the best. Yeah, and well, these two cars next to each other are just Well, you know, cool. that's, that's the essence of the collection is, is putting together truly the best of the best. And you have to step up for these cars, but when you go to sell them, you get world record prices, and that's, that's what you get. But, uh, you know... I think you've only sold a couple cars over the years, and only to step up to some better cars. Um, behind you, behind Eric here, is a uh, really cool car. We saw this car at an auction. We were at a Barrett, I don't know, Barrett Jackson in 2011 yep. or 12 or something. This was, and yeah, I, I he came that. running over to me. You can tell the story. I was, uh, that was I saw funny. the car in the magazine, and thought Jim would laugh at me for buying a Cougar. So it was in the staging area. I ran up to you, I went to the bathroom, and came back, and said, I want you to look at this car. And you walked up and said, I love this car. I would let you buy this car. Yeah, well, <laughs> well something along those that. lines, you know, I'm not one to restrain him. But um, no, these are, you know, I knew with this, a Super Cobra Jet, Cobra, Cobra, is a rare car. Well, that's, this is not only a Super Cobra Jet, it's, a, it's, a, it's got a drag pack. Well, that is cool. It's an, and it's an original body car, original sheet metal. Uh, it was done by a Cougar specialist, and I mean, first class, and... Yeah, it's a $250,000 plus restoration. And at the time, it was. 
and at the time paid a, a lot less for it, paid a record price for a Cougar, but it's easily worth double or more. Well, this car you know. was sent down to Marquez, which is the head Shelby judge in Arizona, who worked with the head of the Cougar registry to get everything perfect. NOS parts, yeah, those guys those have NOS parts. completely perfect. I'm not a Ford guy, and, and we know the, all the right guys in these different venues, and, and uh, we reached out to them, and, and uh, actually the car was sent out there, and, and Marcus, you know, swapped out ex the exhaust system. Any, any reproduction stuff, he, he found original NOS parts. So this car is truly, you know, probably one of the best Cougars out there. And um, yeah, go find another one. And it's got bulletproof paperwork, and it's just, again, along the lines of that collecting philosophy of authenticity, condi condition, and, 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 and uh, provenance paperwork. And there's three things, you, you buy that, you, you, you know, you won't go wrong. So anyway, um, we'll walk into the other room here real quick. And we've got some other fun stories, starting with this uh, 69 GTX. Yeah, this is a 69 Hemi GTX convertible, one of 15. Uh, so Jim and I were working out one day, and the movie Joe Dirt came on. What's up? Oh, my God. Competition Orange, 67. This thing's a Hemi. I said I want the car from Joe Jordan. This is what we found. <laughs> yeah, so the, the, the 66s and 7s, uh, that body style is really not, they don't really command the, the value. Although I did have a satellite, one of two Hemi satellite cars that really, really uh, was a rare piece that, that did very well. But this car belonged to the Mac Tool guy, the local Westchester Mac Tool guy. And he passed away. He, he bought it back in, I think, 91 or 92. It's a Canadian car. And it, it came from Canada and made its way to the Midwest. And he bought it and had it for years. It, and it was never really restored. It had been painted at some point. And Eric bought it that way. And we then did a, uh, a full restoration on it. And uh, it is what you see today. But it's, yeah, it's a rare piece, I guess. Uh, it's the most one highly of option 69 convertible known. There's only, they only made 15. Right. Five Canadian cars. Right. It's a very, very rare car. So you'll see some other Hemis over here. Maybe we can, we can, shoot to this we one. can, uh, we can go through them real quick. Now, um, there's a couple really special cars in here, but uh, this was a car that uh, so this Eric ended up finding on his own through another specialist, uh, Dave Wise, who's uh, the premier Hemi guy out there, authenticator, and we, we got to know him. He educated us on, on where some of the good cars were, and Eric uh, kind of ran with that ball, and you can, you can tell well, a little is, bit about this the, the history on this. This is California from Greg Joseph, who used to work, uh, oh boy, what was his name? Um, Chan Otis Chandler. Otis, yeah, he, yeah, he, he was, was the buyer for Otis Chandler. He worked with Otis Chandler on that on that big collection. And this is a 71 Hemi GTX. They made 11 four speeds, so it's one of 11. It's the only purple white combination car known. It's an original engine, four speed paperwork car. And it's just, you know, in colors with white, it's just, it's just, I like this body style, not Jim's favorite body style. Yeah. I personally like the 71s. It's just a personal thing. I tend to buy cars I like. I've always liked this car. I'd seen one in black once, and, but it wasn't a good car. And when, I, when I found this one in, in plum crazy white interior four speed, you know, I stepped up and bought this car. But again, it's, it's, you know, it's one, of a, one of 11. Yeah, it's, it's a car you have to buy when, when the, uh, when the yeah, opportunity arises. And then uh, you have a black uh, roadrunner over here. This came from the same collection. Black Hemi Road Rudder, four speed, paperwork, high option car, two build sheets, super track pack car. It's also a Pennsylvania car with one owner. Mm -hmm. It was originally from very close to the area here. It was out in California. Yeah, we have a copy of the original title and the, yeah, exactly. the build so, sheet. It's got great, it's a, great it's, provenance. It's a triple black Hemi Road Runner, one of, I think they did 50, 35 Hemi Road Runners, I think. And real rare because it's a factory strobe stripe car. So only. 30% of the cars ever came with a factory strobe stripe in triple black. I, I don't know if you're ever going to find another one, but it's just a really cool looking piece. So we just uh, kind of overlooked this Boss 9 here. The prior owner, another customer of mine, he just dropped off a 2020 Corvette for me uh, that he bought new. He's always changing cars. He bought this from the original owner. This is such a great car. Uh, it's just one of those uh, really special stories. And, and actually, uh, 
and Steve will, will, will show uh, some of the footage of when Steve was just in. Probably the best documented car I've ever had my hands in. I've never seen a car with such thorough paperwork. And it, it, you know, again, it's an original sheet metal car and one owner prior, prior to the restoration and, and subsequent ownership. Just one of those cool story cars. And uh, you know, it, it, uh, I don't know if there's a better Boss 9 out there. It's not an S motor car, but for what it is, it's, it's, it's unequivocally the best of the best. And um, another local car, just, it was new uh, in Delaware, not, not 30 miles from here. And yeah, just, just cool stories about it. Nobody ever sat in the back seat on it and uh, just a lot of, lot, of, lot of coolness with it. So anyway, we don't, wanna, we, we don't wanna overlook this car in the midst of all. This car was then, once we got the car, I took it to the Ford Nationals and had the head Shelby Judd Marcus look at it, same guy to the Cougar, and we sent the car out to him to do all the little perfect pieces. The, the, so every piece on this car is an with, with the exception of the tires and the actual battery, but, but the battery caps are new old stock. Actually, I think the battery caps are original to this car, which is just crazy. This car is 100% new old stock or original parts. And you know, you guys who restore cars, it's just so hard to do that. And uh, it had to go out to a guy who, again, is, is a specialist in that mark and he knows where to, where to procure that stuff. And that's what it takes to bring a car to the, the highest conceivable level out there. So when this car was out in Arizona, Jay Leno wanted to do, uh, it was in Jay Leno's garage, his part of the TV show, he wanted the Boss 9, so he took this car, and this car was on his TV show. And this one is 100% restored. I don't think it gets much better than this. Oh, look at that. There, there you go. go. Now, the owner's going to meet us at the garage. What's his name? Eric. Eric, does he know we're out driving around in his car? Uh, he might have missed that, actually. Well, he will when he sees we, this. Yeah, we, uh, we told him there was some food and drink, and then uh, we took off. Yeah. This is Eric. He's the owner of this car. Okay. Hey, how many miles have you put on this thing? Oh, maybe 200. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, it runs beautifully. Well, that's great. He did a one of Mark did a great, great job. It's a very impressive car. Boy, it runs really nice. It's, it, this is probably better than new, I think, isn't it? Yeah. I would think so, yeah. Yeah, you got a good one on your hands here. I'll give you twice what it costs new. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's, that's the way to do it. Jay Leno sat in this car and drove it, so it's got to be worth 100 grand more, right? <laughs> I mean, he'll tell you that, right? Oh, but only if he's selling it. Yeah. Yeah. But we didn't want to overlook that because it's a really special car. But we're, this is kind of the Hemi room, and this thing's like just stuck here in the middle. But uh, True, it is. Um, anyway, then uh, you got this uh, 70 over here. Um, this is 70 Hemi Cuda. Uh, original driveline, original motor, original trans, original rear, four speed, purple, one of five purple four speeds done in 70, probably the only one left with the original engine. It's also got paperwork. Um, when I bought the car, I was painted a little bit the wrong shade. It was more of a lavender and Jim repainted the car and the car is just gorgeous. Now. Yeah, we don't know what happened there, but somewhere along the line during that restoration, probably the owner wanted it that color and um, it just wasn't correct, especially we couldn't even park it in the same room as the 71 GTX because it's the same color code. So we disassembled the car and, and uh, you know, repainted it and it, it warranted it. It's that special of a car, but uh, this was a, only a couple owner car. The original owner um, had it for, I guess, well into the eighties and then, uh, then it was restored out in California. But it's a great car, and, and, and again, as Eric says, it's uh, you know, special colors, and when you add the uh, authenticity, there's not a lot of these Hemi cars, especially four-speed cars, that have the original engine. You missed the shift, a lot of these things, you know, they grenaded. And to find one that is original, it's really special, and you add these colors, um, you know, you can't price shop a car like this. So, and then I guess it's the crown jewel of your collection at this point is a Chrysler car. Kind of pains me to say it, but <laughs> it is really such a special car. 